You're listening to Linux News Log. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from the lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And if you have, thank you for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stories for this episode. Starting off over at ZDNet by Stephen J. Von Nichols in the Linux and Open Source blog, Ubuntu Touch, the smartphone Ubuntu Linux arrives. Ubuntu 13.10 is great on the desktop, he writes. On smartphones, Saucius Salamander, a.k.a. Ubuntu Touch, is still a work in progress. That said, for mobile programmers and Linux Or smartphone power users, there's a lot to like about this first release of Ubuntu for smartphones and tablets. Here's what you need to know about it today. So he uh, gives a basic run through. It looks pretty slick. He's got a nice uh, screenshot of uh, what it looks like. Uh, Definitely check this out if you are looking to run Sauce Salamanda on a smartphone. From uh, PCROnline.biz for the UK's PC and tech community, Linux is the future of gaming, says Valve Chief, the co-founder and managing director of Valve, which runs the Steam digital distribution platform, has said that Linux and open source are the future of gaming during his keynote presentation at LinuxCon. Gabe Newell joked that making the statement while at the Linux-focused event was like going to Rome and teaching Catholicism to the Pope. <laughs> eh, not quite. Uh, Steam launched in, on Linux in February and now has 198 games available on the platform. The upcoming Steam Box is also set to run on the Linux operating system. So uh, he has high hopes. Unfortunately, Fortunately, over at GamePolitics.com, John Carmack has expressed doubts about Valve's Steam OS and Steam Machines. ID Software co-founder and Oculus Rift guy John Carmack says that he is not convinced that Valve Software can pull off the lofty goals of Steam OS and Steam Machines while at the same time admitting that he has been very wrong in the past about what Valve is capable of. There's an interesting kind of retrospective on it, he says. He also pointed out the time when Valve approached ID Software about adding Doom 3 to Steam's launch lineup, and their response was, are you crazy? Uh, However, after the fact, it turned out to be quite a strong play. Um, he's, He's basically conceding that Right now, he's at that are you crazy point with Steam OS and Steam machines. But 10 years from now, looking back, it may turn out to be one of the greatest plays ever. So uh, pretty interesting. Uh, definitely worth keeping an eye on for sure. Either way. From eWeek.com, Marantis fuels new OpenStack cloud distribution. The open source OpenStack cloud platform distribution landscape is getting a bit more crowded today with the announcement of the new Marantis OpenStack distribution. They're no stranger to, open st- to the OpenStack market and have been leading a services vendor, a leading services vendor in the space since OpenStack first burst onto the cloud scene three years ago. So as the lines blur between platform as a service and infrastructure as a service, the OpenStack services vendor is including Windows integration and Hadoop as a source in its new cloud distribution. So pretty interesting. Definitely check it out. From Business Cloud, Open Virtualization Alliance transforms into Linux Foundation Collaborative Project. The organization announced the news during the LinuxCon Europe conference in Edinburgh today. The Linux Foundation created in 2007 as a support form for the global development community working on the popular open source computing language says that collaborative projects are independently funded software projects that can take advantage of the foundation's global network of industry stakeholders and software developers. So the Open Virtualization Alliance is a consortium of 250 companies. Uh, They're committed to encouraging the adoption of open source virtualization technologies like kernel-based virtual machines, 
Um, it says that the newly announced partnership with the Linux Foundation will bring the organizational and educational expertise to bear on the OVA's efforts to increase the adoption of open source virtualization technologies. So pretty interesting. Definitely give it a look to see. From Slash Gear, I found this article and thought it was pretty interesting and thought I would include it. Linux apparently is powering the upcoming Navy ship USS Zumwalt data centers. The Navy's USS Zumwalt is a massive ship set to hit the water later on this year, doing so with $3.5 billion in costs and some lofty goals. Uh, it's under the command of Captain James Kirk. Yes, that is correct. Not James T. Kirk, just James Kirk. Uh, the ship will be home to a large data center powered by a variety of Linux distros and custom software composing a system that is still being tested. So basically, it's a floating data center on a boat that has giant guns. Um, pretty interesting. Definitely take a look. Now, you have to understand, uh, you know, these boats are very large by many measures and it's not surprising that they have data centers and you know a lot of them are nuclear powered that actually have a nuclear reactor on the boat that generates power so they have very reliable power it's you know you know the boat is very stable even in rough heavy seas uh you know it's not uncommon to have entire computing systems on these boats so should be pretty interesting from Electro Pages, uh, Mouser has the Illumix A20 O Linux Xeno Micro uh, available. It is a compact, low cost, open source, single board Android slash Linux computer. It enables code development of applications running the A20 microcontroller, the ARM Cortex A7 dual core processor manufactured by All Winner Technology. The A20 O Linux XO Micro is software embedded development without the need to perfectly understand the hardware. So pretty interesting. Definitely check it out. It's 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 basically it's a development board or an evaluation board. It comes with a variety of connectors and headers and all that good stuff. So uh, definitely give it a look. See if you are looking to do some Linux based embedded development. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.